Defense Department investigating UFO chase involving fighter jets that left over 300 witnesses stunned. Shalom, Yasha'Allah, peace, Israel, Kohalo, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah, Kodash. Once again, Kohalo, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah, Kodash. It's the brother of Baal Kabar from the Camp Prophets in Babylon here in Tampa, Florida. Next, a double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone who do indeed teach Ruel, well, who we learn is true from. Peace and salutations to the elect that are scattered abroad doing this work in truth and in sincerity. All right, fighter jets versus the UFOs, okay, which we know that the UFOs are recorded in the Holy Bible, labeled as clouds, chariots, angels, you know, and these vehicles, these are the chariots of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. All right, the UFOs, there's been a lot of UFO sightings, and we're going to see more, all right, they're going to start showing themselves more and more. But the heavy thing about it is, you know, through the Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit, you know, through the the truth, you know, through Yahweh Shai, we know what these vehicles are. Not only do we know what these vehicles are, we know who's inside these vehicles, okay? The angels. All right. <clears throat> now I want to go here real quick. Let me go to this. This is um, Revelation 1 and 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Right? And this is talking about when Yahweh Shai comes back, the clouds represent what? The UFOs, the chariots of Yahshua Allah. All right? It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. So when the Lord comes back, he's coming back in the clouds. The clouds also represent the chariots. All right, now let's get a precept to prove that. Precept upon precept, line upon line. <clears throat> Psalms 104 and 3, it says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. All right, you've been having a lot of UFO videos come out. All right, and as you see, it says, Who maketh the clouds his chariot. So another key word for the chariots or the UFOs in the Bible are clouds. You know, concerning the context, you got to know the context of when it's talking about actual cloud or when it's talking about a chariot. All right. Now back to Revelation 1 and 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So the Lord, when he comes back, he's coming back with the chariots, man. All right. And there will be a war in heaven. See, Esau has all this technology. You know, Esau has all the fighter jets, the stealth bombers, you know, helicopters, you know, prince of the power of the air, so to say, you know. So he Esau really thinks he's going to be able to fight the Messiah when he returns, man. When Yahweh Shai comes with the host of heaven. You know, with the, the chariots, the holy angels to gather his elect. You know, Esau in his pride, you know, the, the devil, so proud, he's actually going to try to fight the one who created him. Your creator, you're going to try to fight your own creator. All right, and he, hey, Esau is going to be terrified when they start seeing these vehicles doing, uh, you know, war gestures, you know, start taking Esau out. Man, Esau and his military is going to be absolutely terrified of the power of these chariots, man. All right. Uh, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. All right. So the same Roman soldiers that pierced our Lord, you know, over 2,000 years ago when he was on the cross, they're going to see how I shall come back. And how are they going to see him? Through the regeneration process. Those same men that pierced our Lord are back on this earth today, waiting for their judgment. Which this scripture also shows you regeneration. 
It says, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so among. All right. Now, this is it's actually going to be a war in heaven, man, you know, in the heavenly realm. You know, Esau and his military, his fighter jets versus the so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, the angels. And then you have, you know, Yahweh Shai himself coming back on a big father ship, man. You know, Second Ezra is 13 and describes it. This this chariot is so big that Ezra is described it as a mountain. <clears throat> you know, even when Yahweh Shai comes back, he says, I'm not coming to meet thee as a man. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Going into, you know, mystery Babylon, the great America, you know, the devil. This, this place, America, is being uncovered, okay? It's being revealed. That this is mystery Babylon the great Esau is being revealed to be the devil. Alright, it says, Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. So when the Lord comes back, when Yahweh returns, he's coming back as a god, an immortal, okay, with immortal power. Alright, same thing with the chariots. You know, the angels, you, you, you can't kill an angel. You know, you can't destroy a, a, a chariot. You got all these fake videos coming out of, you know, a chariot crash, a UFO crash. UFOs don't crash, man. All right, the chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai do not crash. All right, so it is going to be a first round knockout. And the Lord himself is a man of war. The book of Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Okay, he is, he exists, and he is a man of war. So that's one of the reasons why he even gave Esau the blessing of the sword. You know, because he's a man of war. When he comes back, there will be a war in heaven. See, Esau has mastered his blessing of the sword, man. He has all different types of technology, you know, uh, all different type of nu nuclear capability. Which lifts up Esau in pride. You know, Esau, the devil, the so-called white people, the Europeans... You know, especially the, the top bankers, they truly believe, you know, through their pride that they're going to be able to fight the Messiah and to win. All right. But that's why there's going to be a war in heaven. The Lord is going to declare his power. <clears throat> Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels, right? The war in heaven is going into this war that's about to take place on this earth. You know, in the midst of World War III, where all the nations are fighting against each other, Yahweh Shai is going to return, and there's actually going to be a war in the heavens, okay? The so-called UFOs are the chariots versus the militaries of the earth, you know, primarily Esau's military, you know? It says, uh, Michael and his angels going into what? The UFOs, Michael the Archangel, fought against the dragon. The dragon represents Esau, Edom, okay, and his military. And the dragon fought in his angels, which is going to be a literal war in heaven, man. It says, and prevailed not. So it's already written that the dragon and his angels, Esau and his military, are not going to prevail this war. Okay, they're going to be destroyed. You're going to see a bunch of space junk flying out of the sky, man. Yeah, that's right. These chariots, they have concentrated fire. You know, they can... Uh, you, you've seen, you know, chariots disarm nuclear weapons. You know, transform, go to the depths of the ocean faster than the speed of light. It says, uh, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, the so-called white man, and Satan, 
which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. And this devil is about to try to deceive the whole world, which he's going to get a majority of the people on earth are going to be deceived into taking what? That Karagma, that RFID CHIP, the new currency that's coming very soon after the crash of this economy, which that's coming. All right. The crash of the U.S. dollar, the crash of the economy. America fumbling the bag. Everything is going according to prophecy. Okay, it's all and it's all ultimately leading up to the return of our Lord Yahushai, which is also going to be, uh, you know, at that time it's going to be a war in heaven, man. All right, so let's go to Second Ezra thirteen real quick. <clears throat> you know, these vehicles have been showing a lot, man. The, the chariots of Yasha Allah, the chariots of Israel. These are also our salvation, man. Actually, you know what? Um, let me go here real quick. Acts, the first chapter. On, all right, this is an account of when Yahweh Shai, after he rose from the dead, you know, he's with his disciples and um, who later became apostles. And when he left the scene, he left in a cloud. All right. And then you had angels that came talking to the disciples and they said, you know, why are you looking up at the clouds? He said the same way that Yahweh Shai left is the same way that Yahweh Shai is coming back. And what in the chariots, all right? Second Ezra's uh, are still like your Acts 1 and six. It says, And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? All right, so, you know, the disciples were asking, like, is it our turn to get the kingdom, you know? It says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And where is that? here in America, we're at the uttermost part of the earth, from one end of the earth to the other, all right, so the Lord is about to bestow power upon his elect as well, he said, you shall receive power, all right, it says, and when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, so keep in mind, you know, Yahweh Shai is talking to the disciples, and the disciples are looking at Yahweh Shai talking, right, he said he was taken up, so Yahweh Shai was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, like with some deemed to be as like an alien invasion or people getting beamed into UFOs. Well, that's how the Lord left the scene. Okay, where do you think they get the ideas of these movies of the, the UFOs and the idea of, you know, the UFOs and all of that? They get that from the Bible, man. All right, when Yahweh Shai, after he resurrected from the dead, he was taken up into a chariot. All right, Enoch taken into a chariot. It says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, so the disciples are watching Yahweh Shai get raised up from the ground into the chariot, which is ultimately a foreshadow of the salvation of Israel. That's exactly how Israel is going to be saved as well. The elect are going to be beamed up into the clouds just like Yahweh Shai was beamed into the clouds. All right? It says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which these two men are the angels, which also said, you man of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in the like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So the same way the Lord left the earth, it's the same way he's going to come back in the clouds and the chariots, the so-called UFOs. All right. And guess what, Esau? These UFOs are a national security threat to your kingdom, man. Because this is a curse to your kingdom. All right. The Lord's coming back. He's going to zap your ass, man. He's going to, it's going to be a first round knockout, as the elder apostle Tar always says, man. All right. A first round knockout. All right. Now, let's get the salvation of Israel. 
because you know what are we going to need to be saved from is what the nuclear destruction if you're here on the lands of america and the shores of america a hundred percent of america is going to be engulfed in flames by way of the the nuclear destruction that's coming so we want to be saved and we want to be saved by way of the chariots yeah how shot coming back and gathering us from the four corners of the earth and lifting us up into the clouds also representing what the chariots first thessalonians 4 and verse 16 it says for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout so the lord's going to come from the heavens okay going to crack the sky with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the most high and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Right. So you have brothers, sisters, children that might have died or passed away in the faith, which really all they are are asleep. OK, they're asleep right now. But when the Lord comes back, the, the dead, the ones that died in the truth, died in their in the faith are going to be raised up first. OK. You know, like Abba Bivens, King Masha and so on and so forth. All right. It says, then we which are alive and remain. So the brothers and sisters that are alive at the last day shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So the same way that Yahweh Shai was taken into the clouds, the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be taken into the clouds. It says to meet the Lord in the air. So we're actually, you know, if we be the elect, we're going to meet Yahweh Shai in that chariot. Okay, and he's going to crown his elect. He's going to turn his elect immortal. Give his elect new bodies to govern this earth righteously. And the elect are going to be made perfect. They're going to be glorified and ultimately justified before the eyes of Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shai. And it starts right here, brothers. You know, being glorified, being, you know, many are called, few are chosen, man. And we want to be that chosen. We want to get that crown. Imagine that's going to be a sight to see, man. Imagine that you, you 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 endure through Jacob's trouble. You see America's crash. I mean, you've been prophesying about it. You've seen it. You see it all take place all the way to the end. And you, you, you know, nuclear missiles are on the way. You got 10 minutes, you know, everybody's screaming, hollering, and the Lord have mercy upon you and beam you up. And then you in the cloud with Yahweh Shai, you in, you in the chariot with Yahweh Shai, he crowned you. He toast you up with some wine. You know, some fine wine, you know, and you're watching America, Mystery Babylon the Great burn. All right. And that's when that's when life begins. All right. It says, um, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So these words should comfort you. All right. So there will be a war in heaven. All right. The salvation of Israel is coming sooner than what we can imagine. Lift up your heads, our redemption draw off nigh. You know, continue to look up, keep your hopes up, keep your chin up, continue to fight, man. We're about to see some interesting things, man. And the most interesting part about it, and you know, the, the most blessed thing about it is we know, okay, we understand, we see what's about to take place. The Lord has revealed it unto us. The secrets have been revealed unto the servants, the prophets. And we know that this is about to take place very soon. So uh, when, when the chariots come, or everyone else thinks it's an alien invasion and, oh my God, what's going on? We're going to be of a sound mind. And we're going to know that this is the angels. These are the chariots. This is Yahweh Shai. All right. So with that, you know, Defense Department investigating UFO chase involving fighter jets that left over 300 witness st witnesses stunned. Guess what? These UFOs are going to be destroying these fighter jets soon. Right, so with that, call Hello Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rakakwadash. Till next time I say Shalom.